All right, we're gonna do a rescan here. I shortened the antenna. I should move everything over a little bit. Oh, I hate windows. Later. It does that stuff. It drives me nuts. You can kind of follow it here. It's moving all the trace, all the dips over a tiny bit. I only took a couple feet off, so. We're sneaking up on perfection here. Everything's going in the right direction. That's good. The first resonant point is still way below 160, but uh, you know, that's the way it goes. It will sneak up on it. What I expect to happen was, is uh, this dip right here is going to move up into 160. This dip might move up into 80, or this one might stay. It's hard to say. Everything's going to move up. This dip here is going to move up into 40. Um, and, and so on, so on. Probably that dip right there is going to move up into uh, uh, 20. That's what we're hoping for. Um, it was a little hard to see this dip leave 160 moving this way, but I'm uh, still looking at the resonant point. The very first resonant point is uh, 1.39 megahertz so the resonance points have not moved up like I expected them to so now I'm kind of focusing more on the SWR dips here and the green line is the uh, the R value we got I and L ice E line ice and resistive uh, nature right there so the second line is 50 50 ohms and that's what it looks like all right, this is Jim AG6IF tweaking the big 320 meter loop, trying to get it uh, resonant where I want it to be resonant, a little bit in every one of the bands and with two full waves on 160. That's the goal. A regular 160 loop is two full waves on 80, of course, right? And uh, up the band, so on and so forth. Uh, four on 40 and so on. Uh, I want two on 160 and increase the bandwidth a little bit and across the board the antenna should perform better have a larger capture area so 7-3 from jim in dayton nevada not ohio this is ag6io thanks for watching